It's actually here. I've been following the rumors and leaks of the Vowed Deckard, aka the Steam Frame, for years. And to be honest, I was starting to wonder if it was even true. But our prayers have been answered. Because Valve has recently announced the Steam Frame. And for the first time in years, we might be looking at a device that genuinely shifts the direction of VR. Today, we're breaking down what the Steam Frame is, why it matters, and how it arrived at a critical time for the VR industry. To understand the impact, we need to look at where VR is right now. VR has kind of been split into two worlds the last few years. There's been the PC VR world, which is what got me first interested in VR with its incredible visuals and in-depth immersive video games, but you're dealing with cables, sensors, and expensive PC setups. And then you have standalone VR, super convenient and cheap but you're limited by mobile hardware and simplified video games. And the standalone market for the last few years has been pretty dominated by Meta, which has pushed VR in a very particular direction. But before we get into that, let's talk about the headset. The Steam Frame is Valve's attempt to bring both sides of VR together, standalone and PC VR in a single flexible device. But let's talk specs. For the display, you're getting roughly 2160 by 2160 pixels per eye, which is a big jump up from older PC VR headsets like the Valve Index, but still less than headsets like the big screen beyond. It also has an LCD screen, which some people have been a little disappointed by. The headset supports 72 to 120 hertz, and there's also 144 hertz experimental mode. The headset also uses pancake lenses, which I'm personally a big fan of. I love the pancake lenses on my Quest 3, and this will help the Steam Frame be slimmer and give you better clarity. The Steam Frame also includes eye tracking, which is very exciting, and this lets the headset use foveated rendering, which means it renders the area you're directly looking at in full detail and lowers the detail in the peripheral vision. This saves a lot of performance, especially during wireless PC streaming. For processing, the headset runs a customized version of Steam OS that's built for ARM chips. But what does that mean? ARM is the type of processor you normally see in phones and standalone devices, not traditional gaming PCs. But Valve used something called Proton, which is basically a translation layer. It lets a lot of regular PC games, like the ones designed for Windows and normal PC processors, run on this ARM hardware. So in simple terms, you still get access to a big chunk of your flat game Steam library even though the headset isn't using a traditional PC processor. Performance may vary though, depending on the game and the support that's there. But I also believe that this makes Android apps really easy to port, which means Quest games. So in theory, developers who release games on the MetaQuest should be able to port their games over super easily. And I also read somewhere that it could potentially also show up on the Steam store. For tracking, it has full inside out tracking. So it uses four cameras on the headset to track the controller, similar to the Quest, which means no base stations and no lighthouses, which is a good and a bad thing. It means less cables and setup, which is a good thing, but also could mean worse tracking and potentially no support for full body tracking. One thing Valve hasn't clarified yet is whether the existing Steam VR base stations and accessories will work with the Steam Frame. And because the headset uses inside out tracking, lighthouse base stations and older index style peripherals probably won't be supported out of the box. But I'm hoping modders can maybe find a way because I've spent a bunch of money on that stuff. And I know some of you guys have too. But because the Steam Frame is an open device, there's root access with the front expansion port, which gives potential for modders or third party developers to build adapters or modules that could bring some of that older hardware back into use or even make completely new hardware to work with the device. It's not confirmed how this could be used, but the openness of the system means means compatibility is at least possible in the future. And because of this, we could see some very exciting accessories come from the modding community. But how do you actually play games on the Steam Frame? It comes with a dedicated 6 gigahertz Wi-Fi 6E adapter that plugs directly into your PC, bypassing your home Wi-Fi, which keeps latency low and the image clean. I've personally been using a Wi-Fi 6E router with my Quest for a while now, and it's one of the best investments I've made. I'm really excited for this tech because I think it will be 
be a game changer for wireless streaming. Valve also announced the Steam Machine, a small compact PC designed to sit in your living room or anywhere in your house. And this is actually a big deal for VR because until now, PC VR has always required a full-size expensive gaming PC. It's needed lots of cables or complicated wireless setups, but with a dedicated streaming box, you can have a simple, clean PC VR experience without a giant tower or a messy desk setup, because mine is very messy right now. <laughs> It basically makes high quality PC VR far more accessible to people who don't want or can't afford a full gaming rig. And combined with the Steam frame being wireless first, this could open the door for a lot more people to experience PC VR for the first time. And that's what gets me really excited. There's been a growing idea online for a while now that PC VR is dying. And there are a few valid reasons why that belief exists. For starters, we haven't seen many big PC VR releases lately. Quest dominates the VR market and most new VR players start on standalone devices. And Meta has kind of shifted its attention towards social apps and mixed reality. And maybe Meanwhile, high-end PC VR hardware hasn't really changed much in years. But I don't think PC VR is dead, it just needed new hardware and a reason to matter again. And the Steam frame might be that reason. If you can deliver PC VR level fidelity wirelessly with a simple setup and a big game library, suddenly PC VR becomes accessible again. And to far more people than ever before. And I hope especially to game developers. I've always said that the best Quest accessory is a PC, and PC VR is what made me fall in love with VR and still where my heart lies. With the impressive graphics and immersive gameplay and the endless options of mods, I am still an advocate for PC VR. But now that we've talked through the hardware, let's zoom out for a second and look at the bigger picture. It's no secret that Meta dominates the VR space right now, and naturally, that dominance has shaped the direction of the market. Over the past few years, we've really seen their focus shift towards things like free-to-play games, younger audiences, social platforms like Horizon Worlds, and content that's more aligned with their ecosystem goals. And because of that shift, a lot of developers have been struggling. Many have talked about the reduced visibility in the store. They're also reporting because of changes in the Horizon store, they're seeing slower sales, and the challenge of keeping premium VR games sustainable. Some studios have even said that if your game isn't picked up or featured by Meta, it can be very very hard to succeed on the quest door. And as someone who's been in VR for a long time, I think a lot of us have felt that frustration and have been yearning for a platform that supports deeper, more complex VR, which is where I'm hoping the Steam Frame comes in. So why does the Steam Frame actually matters? Well, firstly, it brings competition into the market. And secondly, because it brings back something the VR market has been missing for years. First, it finally gives us a clear PC VR path again. Developers can build high fidelity VR games without having to design around mobile hardware, and they're not restricted to tiny CPUs or simplified graphics anymore. It also gives players access to the full Steam ecosystem. VR games, flat screen games, older PC VR titles are all in one place without being locked into a single store or curated catalog. And it also opens up room for real experimentation again, like with modding, weird niche projects, physics heavy games and all that stuff that doesn't quite work well on mobile chipsets suddenly has a place to live. Like for example we've seen some really cool modding happening with games like Skyrim VR and I can't wait to see more of that. And it also speaks directly to core gamers. People who want deeper more complex experiences instead of just lighter mobile style titles. And I put myself in this boat. And it also has the potential to bring back entire VR genres that basically disappeared under standalone hardware limitation. Things like big RPGs, large physics sandboxes, or mod heavy games, those type of VR experiences that simply can't run on mobile chips. But one of the most interesting things about the Steam frame is how open Valve is making this device. On the front, there's a dedicated expansion port, which is kind of like a plug-in bay for add-ins, and it includes two high-speed camera inputs and a PCIe Gen 4 lane, which is basically a super fast data connection used in PC hardware, which creates a whole world of possibilities possibility for modding. And beyond the hardware, Valve is also giving developers 
lots of freedom. They're also apparently providing things like root access and CAD files so people can design their own attachments and full hardware documentation. And that combination means modders and third party creators can build all kinds of accessories for this headset. So things like extra cameras or sensors or hand tracking units or custom controllers or even entirely new tracking solutions. It might end up being one of the most moddable VR headsets ever released not just in software, but in physical add-ons too. The Steam frame has arrived at a crucial time. PC VR has slowed down and standalone VR has taken over. And many players and developers might feel a bit left behind with the shift to free to play and the shift to younger audiences. But by combining standalone convenience with wireless PC VR performance and a uniquely open hardware design, Valve is giving VR a genuine alternative to the current market direction. And whether it succeeds will depend on price, interest in the headset and long-term performance and interest, but the potential impact is significant. And look, I know I sound like a Valve fangirl, but aren't I allowed to be? I love VR and I've been using VR since 2016. And to be honest, I've been feeling a bit underwhelmed with the shift to free to play on the Quest Store. Like if you look at the most popular games on the Quest Store right now, everything is essentially a Gorilla Tag clone or I Am Cat replica, which is great for them. I'm happy for the people who love these games, but I just hate to admit it, it just doesn't get me excited about the future of VR. I don't know if I'm alone. Let me know what you think about the current state of VR. And like, I don't think the Steam frame will ever compete with the Meta Quest, or is it trying to? I think it's just creating an alternative or a gateway for core VR gamers and developers to explore PC VR again. I've heard rumors that the headset may be around $800, so we'll have to see. I'll definitely be buying one if I can get one in Australia, but I'm just excited to be excited about VR again and I can't wait to see how the Steam Frame will perform and impact the VR industry. Let me know what you think about the Steam Frame. I'm definitely in the more optimistic, positive camp about it, but I'm sure I know there's a lots of negatives about it as well, so I want to hear your thoughts. And let me know if you're picking up one too. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.